Welcome back to another episode of the Nutrition Spot Podcast. Today, we're going to chat all things party season, since that's what we're going into. And it's honestly, for me, the first time I'm seeing a lot of people because of COVID. Like COVID is essentially over. Things are opening up. And it's like, how do I be social again? And we want to talk about that in the context of like food freedom, intuitive eating, body image. Yeah, exactly. And like, we wanted to also share what, I guess what we do to get ready for parties in a sense, both mindset and food wise. Yeah, exactly. We did do a couple of weeks ago, like nutrition tips 101 going into the holiday season, but Yeah. Some of these things, like personally, what I do before a party and what Nikki does might just be, you know, it's like a nice conversation to have Yeah. because how I used to get ready for parties (laughs) compared to how (laughs) I do now, it's different. Yeah. And I think like we really wanted to talk about, like Shana said, we're coming out of lockdowns and COVID and no parties for two years. And now, um, we're allowed to do it and you might have changed, you know, your body might have changed or a lot of things could be different where you're just feeling, maybe you're feeling a little nervous or worried or insecure. Maybe your body image is low and you're just, you know, it's just making it hard for you to really enjoy this holiday season. So we want to just chat about like, what, what are some ways that you can, help neutralize and change those thoughts maybe not change change might not be the right word but you know like try to overcome those negative feelings that you can really enjoy just being able to see people again and enjoy the holiday season without feeling insecure absolutely one thing I'm really working on lately um because it's a lesson learned the hard way is how do I want to remember this moment, this holiday, Mm -hmm. this celebration, how do I want to look back and what do I want my memories to feel like? And so this is coming from many different things. (laughs) Mm -hmm. Um, But if I can look back on my food freedom journey, there was definitely times where I let my body image prevent me from living to the fullest, um, creating rich relationships, you know, because I was so in my head yeah. about, and and this is easier said than done for sure. Like it is part of the journey, but if I could go back, I would have done some things differently. Um, and so this is just, you know, if you are in that part of the journey where you're like body image is like feeling real different because you're allowing your body to heal. Um, yeah, I think I would, if I were to go back, I would go out more and uh, hide less. I definitely had periods of like hiding and um, also periods of not giving myself permission to buy clothes that felt really good. I had a period of like, I'm just going to wear these and I didn't feel Mm -hmm. good because they were like kind of like digging into my body. Um, And therefore I didn't feel good. So I didn't want to show up. Right. So it was like hiding. So now, um, Yeah. I just really, if I'm having like a poor body image day, I just like go through my entire closet and like find something that feels good on my body. You know, like I just want to make sure that I feel comfortable at the party so that I'm not constantly thinking about the old diet culture mindset, the old body image mindset of like, oh my gosh, who's looking at my X, Y, and Z. (laughs) You know, you want to like get dressed without a mirror. And just yeah. be like, I'm going to get dressed based on feel. Yes, that's a good way what of putting it. feels good. Because it's and it's so interesting that you bring this up because how many of us have l- looked back on pictures and, and just been like, why? Why was I so upset about myself and my body? And it's not even really a weight thing, but just like, you know, like not, because we're always, we're never really any better. 10 years later down the road, you know, we're still in that same mindset and we're still wanting to be different and to look different and to have a different shape body or a different number on the scale. And, and we, you know, we're keep, we keep chasing kind of that. Yeah. Uh, when I get to this thing, whatever it is, then I can live my life and then I'll be happy and then I'll be free. Yeah. 
but we never really reach that. And we keep looking back at pictures being like, why didn't I just enjoy life then? Mm -hmm. Why didn't I? And we even had a conversation with one of our private clients yesterday about this. And I'm going to say a number. So trigger warning, Mm -hmm. number on the scale. But she was like, I would complain to my husband that I was 110 pounds. Like, Like she felt like that was too high. Yeah. Like hearing that number kind of shocks, right? Because how many women, like that's a, yeah. that's a small body size. Yeah. And she's like, why, like, why did I, why did I start dieting at 12 and do that to myself? Like I, like I just missed out in those moments. Mm-hmm. And I think no matter what the number is that we are going to say, so many women can relate to that. You know, we're just not being in the moment because we're chasing, chasing this like, perfect body or whatever it might be. Yeah, it's so true. And we know like when Nikki's saying, oh, you know, we look at pictures and we're like, oh, why was I so hard on myself? It's it's so twofold, right? Like you'll get a picture in the present moment and that's when we're so, we can be so hard on ourselves. We're like, oh my God, that's what I look like, <laughs> right? And that's when it, the spiral happens. But she's saying in 10 years from now, you're going to look back on that picture and you're going to be like, why was I being so hard on myself? I'm beautiful, <laughs> right? Yeah. It's, it's just something about that time between yes. the, the present moment and reflecting back, you're like, that was bad. <laughs> like, why was yeah. I being so hard on myself? Well, there's this quote that I see all over Instagram all the time that I love where it's like, when you take a picture of a sunset, does it ever really capture mm. the di- the beauty and like the dynamic of it? You know, like you, yeah. how, like, have you ever taken a picture of a sunset and been like, oh yeah, that turned out exactly like what I'm experiencing? No, right? Like, exactly. It's good. It's good. Yeah. And we don't blame the sunset. You yeah. blame the camera. And it's the same thing with pictures of ourselves. Oh, yeah. Our cameras don't capture what we look like in a sense. Like, you know, like it's never. No. So we always look at them and can scrutinize and find flaws. But it's like, it's not you. It's mm-hmm. the camera. And so. I it totally like, is. <laughs> it is. If you, this is, I mean, just coming from being on social media for quite a few years now, I love like a glossy, flossy image. I love things to look really pretty and like, you know, rosy. It takes a hundred takes to get something that I'm like, oh, that looks how I was going for, you know, kind of thing. And so, yeah, like the first- hundred takes and like perfect lighting. Totally. Yeah. You know, it's and then other people go. I know you don't Photoshop, but like, no. and most of the time, and then, yeah, 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 there's Photoshop too. totally. So, I'm just you know, f- takes and like even taking family photos of our family and my our like you know, the other family members when they wanted like a yeah. family photo shoot because we do that in our f- family. It takes 50 takes to get something real, like everyone feels like, oh, that actually feels like me, that mm-hmm. I feel is like a good representation of me. Um, so anyway, I love that what you're saying, like, we can't capture the sunset, you know, we can't capture, it's hard to capture ourselves. I like that. So don't use yeah. it as a reflection of like, and I, I was making me, it's making me think of too, when, like when I really started to get really hard into diet culture in my late teens, early twenties, I remember seeing a photo of myself and, and in the present moment being like, Oh my gosh, that's what I look like. And I know now if I had that photo, I did, I ripped it up. You guys. <laughs> Oh, because I was, that's how, that was my mindset, right? I'm sure we've all had, and a lot of us have probably ripped up photos yeah. um, being so hard on ourselves. I'm sure looking back on it, I would be like, what was I thinking? You know, so that's it. So yeah. in just take that little bit of like, oh yeah, okay. I've been there before and apply it to the present moment. Like you're beautiful. And it's just your yeah. mindset that has been unfortunately wired into us to hate our bodies or like be so um critiqued uh, critique, critiquing yeah, ourselves like, yeah yeah that's yeah. not letting you see it for what it actually is exactly yeah. exactly and so so we're so so far we've talked about you know finding clothes that you feel good in mm-hmm. so go to the christmas party wearing what feels good don't put on jeans that are too small or a dress that's bugging you in spots that it shouldn't be bugging you like yeah pick an outfit that feels good yeah because it's going to take your mind off of your body if you're at a party and you know your dress is digging into you um I was always really insecure I have like these 
like fat pockets like above my by my armpits like above my boobs you know I don't know I think a lot a lot of women have them yeah and if I wear like anything strapless or anything like that they always push out and I don't care anymore but that was something that I used to be super insecure about Mm. and uh you know so if I was wearing something like then I'm gonna be thinking about that all night right totally yeah so like where you know for me I would if I want to take my mind off it wearing like a dress with straps exactly (laughs) Nikki's puppy Yeah. That makes me think too, now that I'm food free, like I eat more. (laughs) And so my outfit that I choose is going to factor that in, you know, because a lot of times I would choose an outfit that was so tight. And when you're getting ready, you're not full of food. Right. And then when you eat alcohol (laughs) and alcohol, right. Then what happens naturally is part of nature, right? Is your stomach distends. And I would have before probably just wouldn't let myself eat as much as I wanted to in order to keep that like flat stomach appearance. Oh my gosh, you guys. <laughs> I have to say these things because I know that there's people out there thinking these things too, right? So yeah. now I've I've chosen an outfit that's like, I, I don't think I own anything now that's like doesn't have spandex, <laughs> like some sort of stretch in it. Cause I love now. The freedom of a full breath. Like, I cannot believe that I lived so many years of just like basically holding my breath. Right. And And thinking that women's stomachs are supposed to be perfectly flat. Yeah. You know, it's a shame. That in itself created like so much tension and stress. Right. So, my just my body being able to like breathe and inhale and relax is like, I will never go back. So, yeah, yeah, factoring that into my outfit too. Yeah, that's the nice thing about the new – the style being, like, higher waist, True. flowy, you know, like, True. even the baggier jeans coming back. I'm like, this is so nice. If these yeah. low-rise jeans come back, that's just not I'm out. cool. You know, it's just <laughs> – yeah. No, just thanks. causes so much insecurity. Like, nobody feels good wearing a yeah. low-rise jean. Yeah. No. Unless we create a whole new movement where it's, like, low-rise to, like, you know – Slant our distended stomachs, <laughs> you know, like, <laughs> yeah, like it, you know, instead of our abs, <laughs> yeah, exactly. <laughs> That's the yeah. revolution. Um, yeah, so what else? Uh, we were talking about in our two episodes ago, like, eat that's a huge one for me is like eating throughout the day, not saving up. Um, yeah. so honoring my true hunger, if I'm like full on, like, just having a hungry day, I'm gonna honor it, I'm gonna honor, I'm gonna eat. Uh, according to what my hunger is telling me that day. And I'm not going to be like, oh, but later there's going to be special food and alcohol. I definitely don't do that anymore either. Yeah. And like not even from the nutrition, all we talked about nutrition wise, why that's really detrimental to your eating in terms of trying to prevent overeating. But let's talk about like the mental health going into it. You know, if we're starving ourselves all day to go to a party we are not going to enjoy the party because we're going to be bitchy. Oh, <laughs> we're going to be yeah. angry. Like we're not going to be so as sociable Yeah, because it's very hard to be yourself when you're yeah. hungry. Yeah. Oh yeah. That makes me think of one time our client was telling us that she was on a boat trip with another couple and they're just like in the most beautiful setting, just waking up, you know, in the most beautiful places. And she was saying the other female who was on the trip with her, who was not food free, was so grouchy the entire trip and just like giving her significant other just the hardest time. And I was like, I can relate to that. Like I was that person. And it's because I wasn't eating enough. And so you're just like, you're, you're white knuckling everything yeah. and your patience and you, you just, the way you view the world is so negative because your yeah. brain's starving for food, right? Exactly. And like, you're not, you're, ha- you have a hard time being in conversations because you're often thinking about food or your body. Cause it's kind of like super intertwined with body yes. insecurity. Right. And yeah. so we're, we're distracted with that. We're not enjoying conversations. Maybe True. someone at the party isn't your favorite person, but you, you'll you have zero tolerance to be yeah. in a conversation with them. You know, like it's just hard to be, to be yeah. a happy, pleasant, outgoing, easygoing person Yes, for not eating. Yeah. So the way you're going to develop those memories, right? I was saying at the beginning, like, how do I want to remember this? It's going to be a completely different um, experience being well-fed and like mental health, like Nikki's saying, it is yeah. so much richer. So much richer. And then when you get to the party, you're not like 
ravenous and like only eating and then like feeling bloated and then even worse body image because you, you know, you were so hungry. And then you went crazy with the food, which we talked about a couple of weeks ago. Yes. And now you're like bloated and yeah. miserable because of that. Like it's just, you know. Yeah. And it can really drive that um, like all in, you know, like it's going to be a shit show you know, kind of, you know, like I'm going to, tonight's the night to party and like, I'm having, I'm never going to be able to have, I don't know when I'm going to be able to have all these drinks again, you know, kind of thing. It can also drive over indulgence in alcohol. Not that I'm like not shaming anyone for any of that, but I'm just saying the outcome may not be what your, your body truly wanted or what your true self wanted in that moment, all because of that, these scarcity mindsets driving. Oh yeah. The overeating. Right. Yeah. I used to get into that where because I would do the saving up, then the alcohol hits me so hard. Yeah. And it right? just, yeah. And then you're like, of course I want three others. Right. Yeah. <laughs> like, yeah. Well, yeah. I just like, you're like drunk instantly and then yeah. the night's yeah. gone and you don't, you know, often I wouldn't even remember because it would hit me so hard and I don't have a very high limit for alcohol. So it was just, yeah. it's just never good, never a good scene. And then as you get older, that just like wrecks your entire week. Oh my God. Yeah. (laughs) And and as I'm someone who gets a lot of, um, I think because I'm quite introverted and, um, I have that perfectionist thinking, like I have a really hard time in social settings because I second guess everything I'm going to say. So like, I have a hard time, like really just conversing, especially the new people, because I'm like, so in my head about what I'm so exactly the same. Yeah. But when I have alcohol, (laughs) <laughs> oh my God, like that is gone. I have like zero and I'm just like, blah, 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 blah. And yeah. I, you know, like yeah. just in the extroverted side of me comes out, I guess. But then, so because of that, then the next day I get like huge, that like post drinking, the, the anxiety, guilt. the guilt or whatever, where I'm yeah. like, what did I say or what did I do? And oh yeah, no one around me seems to care because like, I'm not a mean person. So I don't like do anything, but no. I just like get in my head. I'm like, oh my God. And I like, <laughs> So then I, not only am I suffering from a hangover, but my like mental, like, you know, like suffering is so bad. Oh so. my God. I'm sure every single person can relate to what you're saying right now. My girlfriends and I, ha- I forget what the saying. It's just like, yeah, hangover guilt, essentially. Or you're like, you're, yeah, you're, you're like, what did, I-? and it's like the worst feeling. If you've never felt yes. this, I'm so grateful for you. Like, it's a good thing you've never, cause it's like, the, it's worse than a hangover, right? Like the guilt, yeah. the anxiety, oh, yeah. like, what did I do? It's terrible feeling but like Nikki's saying yeah. like we didn't actually do anything it's just your anyway it's just, it's just because it's tangent. out of like your normal yeah introverted personality or something I don't know yeah yeah so uh, funny. Just, yeah so anyway so you don't, want, you don't want to feel that so eat, <laughs> eat <laughs> right? yeah <laughs> eating has prevented that for me for many years now so that's I'm grateful for food freedom for that that's great yeah, yeah. um there was something you said something else oh man it's gone now. Oh, it'll come back. Yeah. What else do you do for to get ready for a party? Oh man, I had something too. <laughs> I should write them down when they're coming. We're like a little like pop in my brain when we're so deep in a conversation that I don't want to like interrupt it. Uh-huh. Um so we've talked about finding clothes that fit, eating. Oh, I know what I wanted to say. Okay. So the next thing, and we've talked about this a little bit with body when we talk about body image, but so important to remind yourself that no one really cares what you look like you know like no one is really worried about your body and the few people that maybe do think that way really aren't people how do we say this (laughs) like that's their problem you know like they're not really being a good person I know that sounds really harsh but like Mm -hmm. they're not if they're someone that is going to judge you on what you're wearing, judge you on how your body looks, whatever. Mm-hmm. Like that's not a good friend. They don't good- deserve you yet. You know, like they don't deserve you yet. They're just on, they're still way behind on this like mental journey. You know, that's how I see it. Cause I used to be yeah. that person that would, i not necessarily judge people, but just like, because nope. I was make note. Right. And like, 
because I was so ingrained in making notes about my own body. And that's the thing, right? Like if they're making a note about your body, it's because they're doing it to themselves too, because that's what's important in their mind. So they not, and it really has nothing to do do with you. No. Yeah. It's, or like you, like for your situation, it wasn't their body. It was a problem. It was you feeling insecure about your body and then exactly projecting that onto them. Yes, exactly. Yeah. So just remind yourself that I, um, there was a few situations during my journey where I was going into an environment where potentially my, my weight might've been commented on. And so I would just ask myself, like, I don't know if I actually asked myself this, this is what I would do now. I think I just held my breath and went for it (laughs) and fingers (laughs) crossed that it didn't actually happen. But now anytime I go in a situation like that, where it's like my ego would be really hurt. (laughs) I just ask myself, like, what's the worst that could happen? Like really paint that picture for myself. And then I ask myself, can I deal with that? Am I willing to deal with that? Yes or no. (laughs) Most often, yes, I can deal with that. And so then I just go. And then my brain is prepared for the worst possible outcome. And it's not freaking out the whole time. Just like it's like you're preparing your brain for that kind of thing. So I don't know if that's, and it most likely is not going to happen right? It's most likely not going to happen. I know there's like relatives that are just, yeah. uh, And here's something that we've never really talked about. Okay. But the thing is, is those people that are going to make comments, it doesn't matter what your body looks like Mm -mm. because you're going to like, they're going to judge you no matter Mm -hmm. what size you are, Mm -hmm. you know, like, you're going to get judged if you're bigger than they think you should be. They're, you're going to get judged if you're if you're smaller than they think you should be. Mm-hmm. Like you have to fit into their perfect little window, which probably doesn't even exist because mm-hmm. of their disordered thinking. And so mm-hmm. like you're no matter where you are in your in your body, you're not going to please mm-hmm. in quotation marks everybody. Right? Exactly. So if we spend this time feeling worried about what other people think it's it's never going to go away yes because you're never going to be perfect in their eyes exactly that's a great way of putting it and that goes for those judgmentally people they have got an opinion on everything your kids your parenting your spouse your job you know so yeah we don't care they're like you know you could be nice to their face and everything but the, the weight of their opinion doesn't matter, can not matter to you, you know, if we work on it. I've had to. Yeah. <clears throat> oh, man. Tremendously. Yeah. Not, and like you said, not even just for like body image stuff, but for like everything. Everything, everything. in life. Yeah. yeah. Even just doing this, even just doing our podcast. Like it took yep. us how long to be like, actually like do two this. Years. We're, like, we're, like, we're so afraid of whatever like was going to think about all the things that we were going to say until we got to a point where we're like, well, does it bring us joy? Yes. Do we think yeah. it'll help some people? Yes. Do we care now? No, <laughs> but it took no. us a while to not care. Because of the same thing. There's always going to be people that are going to judge us no matter yes. what we say. And we felt very much in our profession stuck in a box. Yes. Because of what, you know, we're allowed and weren't allowed to say. Yeah. And like, we're still judged even in that box. So it was like, so we can't just, win. Let's yeah, just do we can't it. Win either way. Let's just talk about real life and help people that are going through what we went through and yeah yeah like that box isn't helping anyone so let's change the narrative (laughs) you know exactly yeah Yeah. I remember now too what I wanted to say was um I can be an anxious eater at a party so that can look different differently and so now I just remind myself that that can spring up and I kind of just do like a mental plan of like how I want to remind myself to check in with myself essentially during the party. So that can look like, uh, I'm just going to give examples. Like if I'm really, like Nikki was saying, like I do overthink a lot of things at parties too. Um, and so I will maybe like before, I don't do this so much anymore, but I would like grab a lot of like appetizers. It's just like something to do, like to comfort that anxious energy, you know, or have another without even checking in with myself. Like, do I even want that? And so it comes with practice to like break those um, neural pathways of like the automatic habit response, however you want to say it uh, with practice of just being like, pause, do I want that? Is that feeling good? Is that tasting good? Do I really want you? It has tremendously changed how 
Um, and it brings this like level of like different emotional maturity or intelligence where I just like sometimes just have to stand in my uncomfortableness and just like be aware, like oh, I'm feeling uncomfortable right now. <laughs> yeah. And that's okay. And rather than like reaching for something to soothe it, if that makes sense. Yeah. Well, that's where all the growth comes from, right? Like yeah. growth comes from being uncomfortable. And so if body image is somewhere that you're struggling with and you want to be better, like you want to be more comfortable in your body, these are great opportunities to experience that uncomfortableness. Yes. And then going through it and you know, hopefully you're at a party with good people that yeah. aren't, you know, naysay or Nelly Wellies or whatever, but like yeah, coming out on the other side and being like, oh, yeah, it was okay. Like I had fun. Yeah. In my body. You know, like that's where we grow is from those uncomfortable moments. And like what you're talking about is a lot of that social anxiety, you know, same thing, going and just learning to stand in uncomfortable conversations and try to make small talk when it feels mm-hmm. uncomfortable does make it easier. Oh, I love that so much. Yeah. I was just listening to something on Tony Robbins the other day and he was <laughs> saying the exact same thing. Like if you want something, put yourself in that situation, be uncomfortable. And then it actually gives your brain that evidence that you are that person. You know, you're like, you didn't yeah. melt down, <laughs> you didn't die. And it's going to yeah. give your, your brain so much evidence that you are that person and that all the worst outcomes that you were fearing didn't actually happen. So yeah, I love that, Nikki, the way you said that. Yeah. Was really good. And it really like that's, again, this is why body image is so hard because we all have different bodies. And so it's hard. It's hard when you're like us and you do have thin privilege, but you know, because again, we have thin privilege, but like that was what I had to do. Like I literally had to go to the beach. Yeah with my kids in a bikini and just be like, it's okay. Yeah. You know, and then like experience a fun day at the beach with my kids and be like, it was okay. Yeah. Because before I would have, you know, just wore shorts the whole time or not gone in the water, like, yeah, you know, not played volleyball with them because I was worried what people would think of me. A lot of that with my kids I struggled with is like just doing the fun things with them because I was always worried about what people think. Like even, I don't know if you guys follow me on Instagram, but we went to the water park probably a month ago and my son and my husband and I zip line and I again like instantly was gonna say no my instant reaction is no and it wasn't because I didn't want a zip line I love doing stuff like that because I was like well what are people gonna think of me mm-hmm. and like how silly is mm-hmm. that in the sense of like well they're gonna think I'm a person zip lining yeah you know like like all the other people that have zip lined yeah but I almost said no for like Interesting. just fear of what are people gonna think of me I know. and so I'm I, yeah. And I, when I said yes, my husband was even like, oh, I didn't think you'd come. And I hated that because I was like, I love stuff like this. I've always yeah. been very adventurous. And I'm like, I know because I've said, I spent so much of my adult life saying no to things because I just, I'm like always worried what people are going to think. And we went, we always go, not always, but every couple of summers we go to Mabel Lake to visit friends and um, there's a rope swing. And every year I've said no. And it's not because I don't want to do the rope swing. It's because yeah. of that reason, you know? And last year we didn't go to the rope swing, but we went cliff jumping. And I was like, no, I'm saying yes to cliff jumping because I love cliff jumping. Like, why do I care Yeah, what people are going to think? Like, that doesn't even make It that literally doesn't even make sense because like, <laughs> I'm just jumping off a cliff like everybody else. Like, why am I worried? <laughs> it's so funny how irrational these subconscious beliefs are. Like, we yeah. know we're having this conversation and you're like, this makes no freaking sense. But it has dictated my life and it has therefore produced outcomes that I didn't want. You're like, I wish I had these memories of me doing that every single year. And my kids see, I don't want to make you feel bad, Nick. No, no, I don't feel bad because this is like my internal thing that I'm working on. Yeah. Yeah. So that's the thing is like, oh man, I'm getting goosebumps talking about it. Um, Thank you so much for sharing that, Nikki. And I'm sure so many people can resonate is like, okay, well, when does the madness stop? And like, so bringing this to the the forefront, like Nikki always says, bringing it into our awareness, what kinds of narratives are running in the background, creating these outcomes that we're like, oh crap. (laughs) When we bring them to the our awareness, that's when we are empowered. That's when everything starts to change because you then make that decision out of the norm that's probably uncomfortable. Then you survive and your brain's like, okay, I can adapt this as my new norm. 
And then you're going to be producing the results that you actually desire going forward. <clears throat> yeah. I love that. Thank you so much for sharing. And I feel like I've, I'm so grateful to have you in my life, um, having kids later, just seeing everything that you have worked on with your relationship with your food and your body and, and then like how your kids are benefiting. Cause I don't know, I know exactly what I would have done being my old self, my old body image, um, with food and everything. I would have critiqued my kid's food. I would have continued to critique my husband and be so crabby around him. And, um, I would have not shown up and made the memories with my kids. So thank you for everything that you have done. Yes, really. Yeah. We're so lucky to have you. <laughs> Really, really great. So yeah, anything else that we do at a party? Anything else you can think of? I think that was... So then I just go and have fun and just get out of my head, you know? Yeah. Like what would make this next moment so fun? You know, I just... Do you know what I like to do? Yeah. And I know, I don't know if this is right, but this is something that I like to do. And it's kind of judgy, but I like to go into a setting... And like see other people enjoying themselves. If that yeah. makes sense, like how do I say this? Like, like as evidence that anybody can enjoy themselves in these situations. You know, okay. like kind of seeing like maybe like things that I'm scared of. Like oh, if there's like another mom at the water park going down the slides, I can be like, look, she's going You're down looking the for it. With her mom. Yeah, yes. like just looking for like confirmation that it's okay. Totally. For whatever you're feeling insecure about, yeah, that look, there's someone else just like me, in whatever form you're thinking of, um, doing the thing that I'm nervous to do, yes, and enjoying life, and like just I, that helps me for some reason. That has been everything for me. Um, like we say it all the time, right? It's like change your social media feed, and change it to people like curate your feed curate it um, full of people that look like you that are doing the things that you want to be doing. And they're out there. There's a whole other world outside of diet culture. <laughs> Mute all those accounts because they, yeah. they, they're they falsely inspirational, right? We don't want that anymore. Yeah. Find the people that actually look like you and are doing the things that you want to be doing to give your brain that permission that Nikki's talking about. And then everything starts to change. You're like, why yeah. was I even, you know, thinking about those old things? You're like, that was yeah. crazy. <laughs> exactly. So I love that. Yeah. So in real time, you're at the party looking for people that look like you having a great time, right? Yeah. And then go be their friends. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. And I mean, we don't know what internally they're struggling yeah. with, but try yeah. not to think about it that way. Just look, look at it as straight up evidence that like they can do it. You can do it. Yeah. I love that. That's a good note to end on. <laughs> yeah. You can do it. You can do it. It's so true. If we can do it, you guys, you can, oh man, you can do it. Yeah. yeah. So um, I'm going to put my story up soon. Nikki already has her story up on YouTube. We've been there. Oh man, we've been there. So yeah. hopefully this episode was helpful. Um, happy holidays. We'll probably do one more before. Yeah. We'll see. We'll Maybe. see. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> okay. All, All right. right. Talk to you guys soon. Bye.